everybody. Good afternoon. I am excited to be here with my friend, Dr. Trevor Cates. We were just comparing ski stories because we both live in ski areas and love to ski. And uh, at least here in Boulder, Colorado, we got, gosh, if you've been watching the news, it's like the snowstorm of the decade. I think we got over two feet in some places. Um, so unfortunately the roads were all closed, so I wasn't able to get up to the slopes, but we do share a love for those slopes. And you're in Park City, right, Dr. Cates? Yes, I am. I know. I'm, I'm so jealous. We didn't get all the snow that you guys got. <laughs> yeah, it was always great. It keeps like powder day. <laughs> I'm out. <laughs> oh, it's so funny. I have a, one employee who likes to ski and I'm like, if it ever has a really great powder day, we'll just like secretly like Dr. Jill and Natalie are sick and we're going to be on this. <laughs> it hasn't happened yet. But anyway, um, well, thank you guys for joining me. Just a few housekeeping things. Um, you know, you can find all of our old videos on, on my YouTube channel, which is just under my name. Jill Carnahan. You can find all of these recordings if you've missed any of them. And my new podcast is now launched. So you can find me on iTunes and pretty much anywhere podcasting is um, happening. I'm there and you can find all these episodes there. Um, here on Facebook, you can watch this. It'll be recorded. So if you've missed the first part, you can come back. Um, today, I am super excited about my guest, Dr. Trevor Cates. Um, we've known each other for probably over a decade, uh, gone in the same circles and everything. And um, today we're going to talk about skincare and particularly how the microbiome and skincare relate, um, the gut skin connection. So we're going to dive into all things skincare related. Um, I know Dr. Cates and I both uh, want to live vibrantly healthy and well. And the more important thing is not that there's anything wrong with visiting a plastic surgeon, but for me, I want to be vibrantly living from within so that I show a glow on the outside, but it comes from this way of lifestyle and even the kind of products that we're going to talk about, because these things all matter. And I know most of you women, maybe some of you men watching um, are going to really enjoy some of the tips and tricks that you hear from Dr. Cates today on how to optimize your skin, because as we'll talk about Dr. Cates, it's, it's kind of this mirror. She talks about the mirror from within. So we'll dive into that. I want to briefly introduce her and then um, without further ado, we'll, we'll jump right in. So Dr. Cates, Dr. Trevor Cates is a best-selling author of the book, Clean Skin from Within. I'll be sure and uh, leave a link here and in all of the <clears throat> avenues where you might find this show um, for that book, if you want to purchase your co own copy. She's a founder of the Spa Doctor, <clears throat> a natural skincare line. She received her medical degree from the National University of Natural Medicine as, and was one of the first women licensed as a naturopathic doctor in the state of California. She currently lives in Park City, Utah, where she helps patients from around the world achieve naturally glowing skin. She's been featured in various TV shows, including The Doctors and Extra TV. She has interviewed over 250 experts on the Spa Doctor podcast and hosted her own PBS special, Younger Skin from Within. She believes the key to healthy skin is inner and outer nourishment with natural and non-toxic ingredients. Um, so welcome, Dr. Kate. So good to have you here and to connect again. Um, would love to just start out by how did you get into this realm? Tell us a little about your backstory of how you got here. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you so much for having me. It's so great to, to be here talking about skin. So, um, you know, it was interesting. I, I've been seeing patients as a naturopathic physician for 21 years. And it was um, really when I was at the, at the Waldorf Astoria Spa and I was running these two week weight loss programs. This was about 10 years ago. Now I was running these, these weight loss programs. And at the end of the two weeks, my, the patients would say, Dr. Cates, I've lost this weight. I feel great. But what surprises me is my skin. I didn't know my skin could look this like you were talking about so vibrant so healthy and that their skin issues were going away but also they just noticed a, just a more vibrant glow about their skin and to me it made sense I, was, I said of course that your skin is an outer reflection of overall health but i realized with so many people saying how surprised they were i realized that oftentimes people look at you know the conventional approach to skin is when you have a skin problem to use something topical to suppress it or to for women to wear more makeup to kind of hide different things. But I wanted people to realize that skin is actually an outer reflection of our overall health. And it actually ties into my own personal journey and what led me to become a naturopathic physician, which is as a child, I had a lot of allergies, a lot of health issues that showed up on my skin. And that was one of the things that flared up the most is 
itchy rashes, mysterious bumps, hives, eczema, I had like everything. I was reactive to everything. And my parents took me to see a lot of different conventional doctors. And I would, I would have allergic reactions or adverse reactions to everything. And so I was this sort of difficult case for a lot of them. And I remember even at one point, one of the doctors said, you're just going to have to move because she's allergic to everything in Virginia where I was growing up. And so um, thankfully my parents didn't give up and they kept searching and they actually eventually found a holistic practitioner that they took me to. And what I realized after that is, you know, I had this incredible recovery from my skin and my, uh, my allergies, my overall health issues. I felt healthier, more vibrant, you know, showed up on my skin. And I, when you have skin issues or anybody who struggled with skin issues, it can really affect your self-esteem. And I remember as a child being so embarrassed by the skin things that I would, I would have. And I didn't feel like a normal kid. So when it cleared up, not only did I physically feel better and that itching, all of that, but also just feeling more confident in my own skin. And so I remember also thinking, why did I have to go through all of this for a holistic approach to be presented? Why did I have to go through all the struggle? Why wasn't it just presented, you know, as like everything else was presented to us? And that's kind of like, created this passion in me at a young age. And what I found out about naturopathic medical school later on, I thought, okay, this is what I want to do. So that I can help other people avoid hopefully these painful paths and like go into more of an integrative holistic path. Um, and so, so it kind of came full circle. And I realized when I was at the Wilder Pistoria, I realized I really need to write this book on skin because yeah. it is, you know, our skin is our magic mirror and it gives us great clues about our health. And it's often one of the early warning signs that shows up for our, our health. And when we look at our skin and the issues, especially chronic skin issues, um, or even just the sort of dullness, dry, you know, just not that, that vibrancy of our skin, there's something behind it. And I could talk more about the root causes behind that, but things like inflammation, gut microbiome, nutritional deficiencies, hormone imbalances, blood sugar issues, oxidative damage, these are really the root causes behind so many skin issues. And of course, you know, they're related to so many other health issues. So there's this connection there. Oh gosh, I love, and thank you for sharing. And, and I'm sorry you had to go through that, um, but gosh, what a beautiful thing to have that transformation and then the information and to bring that with the passion because you know what it's like. I so understand Trevor because I grew up with eggs and my allergies, skin issues galore. Grew up on a farm and the farm was corn and soybeans and probably mold on those corn and soybeans and so many things. And like your parents, my parents at one point were like, this farm is killing you <laughs> in, in a sense of like how much it was harming my health and the, all of the things in the environment. But again, probably gut, which we'll talk about and, and nutritional imbalances and things were also the underlying cause. And the same way, my parents finally took me to like a chiropractor who kind of knew some nutrition. And those were the kind of things that helped me. And it's funny, I was just talking to someone earlier today about my journey. And I remember that chiropractor telling me, you know, Jill, you could go into chiropractic medical school or any of these realms, but um, I actually think you maybe should go to allopathic medicine and start to shift the conversation because I, my heart was a heart at a naturopath, just like you, like I had I just, I feel like there's so much value value and probably more value in some of these, um, you know, more natural ways of healing, which is what we both use nowadays. But um, if, as we kind of shift the story and bring the uh, awareness out, it's so important because a medication isn't going to clear your skin up from the inside out and cause any permanent change. So. And I, and I can say that mold was definitely, I grew up on a farm and mold was definitely an issue in our house. In fact, I had, uh, I couldn't leave anything on the floor. I lived in the basement of our house. I couldn't leave anything on the floor because if I left it on the floor for more like a doll or something on the floor for a stuffed animal for more than a day, it would have mold growing on it. Yeah. Wow. Oh my gosh. Now that's what I tell patients now. If they have like, you know, fruit in a basket on the counter or shoes in their closet and they get moldy. Well, that's a pretty good sign. Yeah. Wow. And you know, interesting. I have to take a little tangent on this because of course I love to talk about mold and mold wrecked my skin. I had horrible cystic acne. 
Um, sometimes in lectures, I show the pictures and people are just like gasp when they see my face because it is just completely covered. It's kind of a miracle that I can now have clear skin after all that I've been through, but our skin is resilient and mold is such a trigger that C4A, which is one of the split complement products that causes massive inflammation is known to cause cystic acne. So it's no wonder that people have trouble even as adults in a, in an environment where there's a toxin like that. Um, so you just mentioned some really great categories. I'd love to just dive briefly into all those, the gut and the uh, oxidative stress. And do you want to talk about some of these underlying factors and just dive into each one just a little bit? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And so when I was doing uh, research for my book and I was going back and I was looking at looking at patterns in my patients and I discovered that there are six root causes behind skin issues. And I talk about them all in my book. And But I also realized that not everybody has all six uh, of these issues. So I actually created an online skin quiz so people can go and take that. It's theskinquiz.com. And I created different skin types and I actually gave them, I gave them all human names because, uh, you know, we, like you, we, we see our, our patients as people, not just a skin issue or, you know, health issues. So they're Amber, Olivia, Sage, Emmett, and Heath. So they're these skin personality types. And the way I categorize them was based upon several root causes. So I encourage people to take that because sometimes it can be a bit overwhelming when we talk about, you know, all of the root causes, and we probably don't even have time to talk about all of them today, but I do think it would be great to talk about the microbiome. I definitely want to dive into that one today because, um, there is so much really fascinating research unfolding about the microbiome. And just so for people who aren't familiar with what, what is the microbiome? So we have these, uh, different areas of the body where we have, these microorganisms that live in on and protect. And so in a healthy state, in a balanced state, they can help restore health, maintain health. But when they get out of balance, that's part of one of the big triggers that happens. So a lot of what we talk about um, with the skin is the skin microbiome and the gut microbiome, because the gut microbiota, when, when that is out of balance, that can cause imbalances in the, all the microorganisms that live on the skin. Now, the microorganisms that live on the skin are very different than the ones that live in the gut for obvious reasons, like our skin is exposed, is exposed to the air, our skin, one of the biggest functions of it is to provide a barrier to the outside world. And so it needs to have certain microorganisms that help protect our skin from, from the environment that we live in. But what's also very fascinating about that is what's around us is very, it very much impacts our skin. So like who we live with, if we have pets in the home, our hygiene practices, whether we, you know, like use you know, lots of bleach and Clorox and things like that, cleaning agents, or whether we, um, you know, we live on a farm or an urban environment. There's, there's so many different factors in our environment that play a role externally as well. So we want to, when we're looking at the skin microbiome and helping it in its resilient state, we want to do both internal and external support. And I really do think that the, the majority of the root causes, some more than, than others, we want to come about it from this approach of internal and external. So just, I know from experience of for many years, like basically 10 years of my naturopathic medical practice, I focused really exclusively from the inside out and helping people with skin problems. And then, but then when I was uh, researching for my book and I was um, looking at creating a skin, my skincare line, the Spot Doctor skincare line, I started to realize the importance of also putting things on the skin that we can't just do it all from the inside out, which a lot of it does come from that. But also we need to be mindful of what we put on the skin. So it's really a two part. And if you only do the external or you only do the internal, you're really missing out. And when I made that connection with my patients and started using that both internal and external approach, that's when really saw the difference happening. Wow. I love that. So I want to talk about, you know, how do you approach in your book, you have kind of a two week program of how to start to shift. And then I want to talk about like ingredients and skincare, what we have to watch. A lot of people don't know what they're putting on their skin is toxic and what to avoid. So let's start with like, where would you start with your clients on the a few weeks to start in this process of getting clear skin? Yeah, absolutely. So in my, in my book, I, I 
lead people through a two week program. And so there are four different aspects of the program. There's clean plate, clean slate, clean body and clean mind. So the clean plate section has to do with the foods that we eat. And we wanna think of, of course, food is medicine, right? So we can actually help either, uh, we could either, well, the, what we choose to eat, we can either trigger the root causes like inflammation or gut microbiome imbalances, or we can actually use food as medicine to help address them. So eating anti-inflammatory foods rather than more pro-inflammatory foods or foods that help support the gut microbiome like high fiber, uh, plant-based foods and eating like a diverse variety of produce, things like that. We know that helps support the gut microbiome. So, so that is a really, a, of course, a really important part of it is the food, the clean plate portion. But there's also the clean slate. So I just, like I mentioned, what we put on our skin. And so there are certain things that we want to avoid that actually are toxic to our bodies overall. And we, we could talk more about that as well. But there are also things that actually can create imbalances with the skin microbiome that we put on the skin. And some of these things, we think we're doing a really good job. And we're using natural products, but yet they actually can still disrupt the skin microbiome. Then the third part is about clean body because uh, what what, it's not just about what we put on our skin, but also what else is in our environment that could be toxic to us or, or triggering more of these root causes and helping support our body's detoxification pathways. And a lot of times people think of detoxification, they think the liver, maybe the kidneys, but the skin is also a really important detoxification organ. We perspire, we sweat through the skin. That's one of the ways we get toxins out of the body. So our bodies are so wisely designed to, to get toxins toxins out. We want to do things to support. And then the clean mind section is about stress management and mindfulness practices because stress is a, like, it can be kind of toxic to the body. And if we don't manage it well, then um, it can be a contributing factor to, especially inflammatory skin issues, triggering, you know, increasing cortisol in that, and that inflammatory response that happens. So it's really, I like to talk about all four of these. And I know a lot of times people either want, just want to talk about food or they want to just talk about skincare products. But it is, and before we dive into like talking more about skincare, I do want people to know it's really this overall approach that gives you the best results. Gosh, I couldn't agree more because the diet's huge. But again, if you have a toxic living situation or toxic chemicals or using the wrong products, every single piece there matters. It's interesting as you're going, I have questions. I think the audience would want to know on each section. And there's a few things. First of all, foods. People always want to know, um, are there any foods like obviously like in my auto practice with autoimmunity, environmental toxicity, gluten is usually a no-go for most people. Are there a few foods that you're like, th these are generally good for clear skin to totally avoid? What's your thoughts on like say gluten or dairy or sugar? Or what are some of the things you would say generally for clear skin, you want to mostly avoid these foods? All right. Well, I think it's important, first of all, to have a great relationship with food. And I never like to think of food as bad and nothing is, is bad. It's just that there, certain things are better for our skin than other things. Um, we do know that sugar is one of these triggers for inflammatory skin conditions. And uh, for example, you know, and, and, and us also for acne and accelerated aging because with accelerated aging, it, it, it causes glycation issues. If you're eating too much sugar or your blood sugar is just as elevated, um, and we're not, you know, not in a balanced state and also really can trigger acne breakouts too. And it's just overall inflammatory, but you also mentioned gluten and that is definitely another big one that I oftentimes see. Now I'm not necessarily saying it's, it's the thing for everyone, um, but it is one of the more common ones. And in my book about, I talk about 10 different ones, but I, you know, I think if you want to just narrow down, start with a few different ones to maybe to start, uh, eliminating and seeing if these could be triggers for you, I would say sugar, gluten, and dairy. Those are three of the big ones. Oh, totally agree. Um, so, and again, like, I love what you're saying too. I always hate putting people in a box and making the box smaller and restricting and causing disordered eating. Um, but there is a general trend to inflammation that we see these foods often associated. So I like that we, we've kind of clarified that 
Now, clean slate, what I thought about now with our um, post-COVID kind of in the middle of figuring out this pandemic, a couple of things. First of all, we're putting alcohol all over our skin, all over our body. And my take is alcohol is really not good for our skin and it, it destroys the natural microbi microbiome. So the two things I would love your thoughts on are um, alcohol products and some of these products and cleansers that may not be helpful. And also mask and mask me <laughs> um, and thoughts about, you know, again, we may not always have a choice of in public wearing or not wearing that, but any tips on both the stuff that we're causing to sanitize our environment and hands and how that affects our skin and then what we're doing to our face by having these um, artificial kinds of materials on our face. Yeah, no, it's definitely a, a challenging one because we, we you know, the, the alcohol and the um, hand sanitizers is there to kill off, um, you know, our healthy microbiome <laughs> in a way, right? And all the yeah. viruses too, but we lose, we actually destroy some of the healthy protection from our. Yeah. So I would say use, you know, try and use them minimally as much as, you know, when you're out and about and you can't wash your hands, um, then, you know, using the hand sanitizers. And if you do, when you do use hand sanitizers, try and want, use the uh, ones that don't have a bunch of other ingredients and also that have aloe and that, cause then aloe is, is naturally hydrating. You can usually find those, but check the ingredient list. Cause a lot of times they have fragrance and a lot of other things that we don't need. And I do want to remind people that hand washing is actually better than using a hand sanitizer for multiple reasons. Yeah. It's actually safer for you and um, protecting you against micro, you know, the bad bugs, but also helping maintain your, your healthy microbiome. It's, it's a, it's a better choice. So just using just basic soap and water on your hands. Um, but, and then just saving the hand sanitizer when you absolutely, or, you know, can't get to a bathroom and need to use it and maybe even carrying your own so that you're not going, you know, somebody says, you know, here, use, you know, use the one in our store. Say, I've got my own, I've got mine, you know, <laughs> that way, you know, what's in it. Cause some of these are kind of scary, honestly, the ones that are out there. So, but, you know, of course we want to uh, respect all of the regulations out mm -hmm. there and, and, you know, being able to go out and about there's all of that, but I do feel like and I do want to talk about masking, but let's talk some more about, about, you know, cleansing, because it is one of the things that people, we tend to overdo the, the hygiene practices. So when you're at home, you don't need to be using these hand sanitizer products. You're in your own environment and, um, you know, so you don't have to use these, but people are oftentimes still overdoing it. And, you know, we're talking about hands here and hygiene, but also we want to talk about the face because this is one of, you know, the areas that we want to protect and then, Hey, we're all, we're all planning on living longer. So we want our skin to be able to keep up with us, right? <laughs> we're feeling great. We're eating healthy, but let's maintain our skin too. So a lot of people are using cleansers on their face that actually disrupt the skin microbiome biome that actually um, strip the skin. So these foam Foaming sudsies kinds of cleansers. They actually are that squeaky clean feeling that people are used to feeling is actually not a good thing because it's stripping away these natural oils and our skin. Um, our, our skin has does best with a mild acidity to it. Whereas a lot of cleansers, a lot of soaps, face washes, they have actually have a high pH. So it disrupts that natural uh, mild acidity, which then disrupts the skin microbiome. What does that mean? Well, that's gonna mean your skin is gonna be more likely more sensitive um, to breaking out in various things, acne, eczema, um, and also premature aging. So it really needs that support. And so when we start our, our skincare routine with a, a, a foamy, sudsy kind of cleanser, we're just uh, depleting it. So I recommend people to use instead more of an oil-based cleanser that actually has a lower, a mildly acidic, but like 4.6 to five is more of an ideal, um, under 5.5. A lot of cleansers, if you test with a pH strip, 
in also moisturizers, you'll see that the, a lot of them have a higher pH, which doesn't support your uh, natural skin pH and microbiome. So that's an important part in skincare and um, just starting with that step of using a really good cleanser. And, and I would say just as someone, you know, who, who has a history of eczema and still I have that tendency to sensitive skin. What I notice is all these hand sanitizers and, you know, wash, even washing my hands more, my skin, I was starting to get some eczema on my hands and my skin was so dry. So um, when I'm at home, I actually use my face cleanser on my hands because it's this oil-based cleanser and it is so much more hydrating to my skin and still my skin still feels clean, but without being stripped. So it's important to maintain that barrier function of your skin. And when you start to get that dry or the eczema or anything, that means that your skin barrier function is breaking down. And, and when we talk about the gut, we call that leaky gut, right? But when we're talking about the skin, we can have actually leaky skin. Oh yeah. And that's classic with both of you and I having eczema, we're prone to that. So I want to dive into gut next. Thanks so much for clarifying just a couple of things. We're going to dive into the gut. We're going to talk about your product line, but I did want to mention, I didn't plan on bringing this up, but we're talking about hand sanitizer. I do have one. I, I put a link there and it contains hemp oil, coconut oil, um, aloe extract and hyaluronic acid. So I have this all over my office. And like uh, Dr. Kate said, when I'm at home, I'm not even using this. I'm using regular soap and water, or I love the idea of using your cleanser. But if you're out and about, want something in your purse or your office, I did include a link to my foaming hand sanitizer, which is actually really moisturizing compared to the other ones out there. So you can check that out. So let's dive into the gut. And then I want people to hear about your product line. Um, so let's talk just briefly, yeah, about gut. And of course, we could spend two hours on SIBO and CIFO and dysbiosis and yeast and all that. But let's just touch on like, do you recommend any like probiotics and specifically, or um, how does the gut and skin, why is that so important? You and I both know that's true. Yeah, absolutely. And I, I did promise I would mention like some tips on mask knee. So yeah. I, I don't want to forget about that too. Yeah. And also I can, I have, I have a blog on my website at the spot doctor. People can go and read that. On, oh, on we will include that link in yeah. all of the, um, so I'll get that from you and we'll include that as well. Okay. Okay, perfect. Um, Cause I know there's so much to cover, but, yeah. um, and, and you know, the gut is so important and just skin reactions overall, even people with mass knee, a lot of times they're forgetting about their gut health. And if they're tend to getting more of that, you might want to take a look at your gut. So, um, you know, let's talk about that. I definitely, with my patients, it's one of the things that um, I do often will, will test with skin issues is I see when people have chronic skin problems, they oftentimes have gut um, uh, dysbiosis issues as well. Yeah. Yes. So, so a lot of it has to do with helping support the gut health with a healthy diet, um, getting, like I said, lots, plenty of fiber, getting um, lots of a variety of produce. What we found is when we, if we eat the same things all the time, even if we're eating a lot, you know, vegetables, um, if we're not eating a variety, we're missing out on more of a diversity of um, nutrients, but also it helps with the gut microbiome. So eating more, trying different things, getting creative and really getting in those, those fiber rich foods. Um, and then, you know, there are uh, the prebiotic rich foods, as well as the probiotic rich foods, which I'm sure that you talk to people about. And then if that's not enough, then looking to things like probiotics, prebiotic, probiotic supplements, and those can be helpful. And if you're trying to do it on your own and you're still not getting results, then work with a functional medicine doctor or a naturopathic physician who can do some testing to, to find out what exactly is going on because you might have some imbalances that need some really specific treatment. Yeah, this can go really deep. So you can start some things on your own. And a couple caveats that I've learned at treating guts is um, if you have trouble, I, we love, I love food first. Love that, that you're talking about that, Dr. Cates. And I would agree. The one caveat is if you have histamine issues and histamine issues trigger skin issues, like they do in me, then fermented foods, sometimes bone broths and things that would typically be really good nourishing gut foods can be a trigger for you. So just be aware that just because someone says bone broth is good for everybody or um, keeper is really good for everybody. For you, if you have histamine issues, just be aware if you feel like you're flaring, 
that may be an underlying thing. And then, um, and even certain probiotics with like lactobacillus casei can be shown to raise histamine, whereas lactobacillus rhamnosus or bifidobacter is shown to lower. And spore probiotics are usually a good idea for almost anyone. So those are little caveats. If you're struggling, find a good doctor to kind of guide you in the gut. Um, I did find your article on MASNI and I posted it. So that's up already. Okay. Um, and then, uh, and if you want to say anything about that, and then I want to talk about your products in the last 10 minutes here. Yeah, absolutely. No, I mean, I think that, that the blog has some tips and um, there are just some th simple things that, that you can, you can think about and, and, um, and use when you're, if you're having to wear a mask, especially for prolonged periods of time, if you have that requirement and you're having to go to school or work and, 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 and needing it, but yet you're having skin breakouts. So there's some tips like just be mindful of the type of uh, material that the mask is made out of. And then also what are you putting on your skin under the mask? And are you able to take the mask off periodically and actually use a good cleanser that helps um, kind of clear up your skin, um, give it a, a clean slate and then put the mask back on that. Those are some, some, some brief tips. One other thing I'm thinking pretty simple and I'd love to know your opinion, but I'm assuming for women, um, maybe less makeup is more. If you're going to wear a mask, you probably shouldn't be wearing a lot of makeup underneath it. Right. Cause that's going to clog the pores. And right. Yeah, no, absolutely. That's what I'm saying. Like, what are you putting underneath? Yeah. You don't really need to wear it, right. I know people are taking it on and off. It may not be as much of an issue for you, but I mean, you know what? I, I, you know, I, I think as women, I, we really, we love to kind of a lot of us anyway, like to kind of get, you know, do our hair and makeup. We like that part, but um, what I want your goal to be is to not need to wear makeup. So if you're, if you, you know, if you're looking at addressing the root causes of your skin issues, you won't have anything to hide anymore. You won't have the breakouts. You won't have the, the discolorations in your skin, the imbalances in your skin, you can actually heal that. And so if you happen to have to take off your mask and you know, you don't have makeup on, you're not going to be embarrassed about it. That's what my goal is for you. And then if you want to wear makeup and you want to enhance, you know, your natural beauty, you can do that. Make sure you're using clean products though. <laughs> I love it. And I, I couldn't agree more because I had a lot of issues between cancer, Crohn's mold in my twenties and thirties. And I think my skin is clearer now than it ever was before. And what I find is I'm much more apt to go out on a hike. I don't wear any makeup and I feel confident about my skin now, because again, that internal, it's really freeing, <laughs> you know, just to not have to, and again, nothing against makeup. I love putting on my makeup, but it's fun to be able to go out without it when I of all people know how it was to have lots of breakouts, really, really difficult skin. And it was almost embarrassing and shameful to go out with how, how I felt, how bad it looked before. And again, that was my issue, but it's, I really, really get that. Um, well, let's talk a little bit about your line. Um, I've used it. I love it. So tell us a little bit about what you have for your uh, products. Yeah, absolutely. I wanted to create something for my patients, for myself, my, my daughters, you know, my family and, you know, my friends that, because the thing is what I was finding is that people were telling me, well, I want to use natural skincare products because I realize there are all these toxic ingredients in skincare products, but I don't think the natural products work. That's what people kept telling me. So I, I know of the healing powers of nature. So I started to dive into the research, look at what maybe may have been missing from the natural skincare lines out there. And that's when I started to learn all this about the skin microbiome, the pH of the skin and the importance of maintaining that pH. And then also certain natural Actives. And, you know, just like with our supplements, we want to have the purest, most potent form of these nutrients and herbs in our supplements. We also want that with our skincare products. So I noticed that a lot of natural skincare lines, they were starting to kind of, you know, not use the purest form, not use them and like enough of the ingredient to actually create results. So that's what led me to create the Spot Doctor skincare line, because I wanted to take in all these key aspects of what will make a natural product truly effective because I wanted people to be able to feel like natural can be effective. Yes, it is. <laughs> so I created a four-step skincare system. It's a cleanser, serum, moisturizer, and a plant-based oil blend. And, and, and I wanted to create it in a simple system, all with a pH that supports the skin and with these natural actives. 
so that's what I created. And as you can tell, I mean, you know, you're using the products. It's amazing the results that can happen when you use a really great natural skin care line that supports healthy skin. And we, I, you know, I, I knew it was going to be amazing when I launched the company five years ago, but we continue to get these incredible testimonials from people and they, they, you know, they use the products for 30 days and the results that they see in their skin is, is pretty phenomenal. And I honestly, before I turned 40, I didn't really think much about personally about skincare products, but I think in my early forties, I really started to think, okay, I need to start looking at this personally too. And I'm so glad, I mean, I'm 48 now and I'm so glad that I did because I, I look back at pictures from my thirties and I feel like my skin is in many ways healthier than it was when I was younger because of using these products and adding it into a healthy routine. Oh, I could not agree more with you. And the same thing right around 40, I was like, oh, and for me, like sun is that we didn't talk about sun, but I was a sun worshiper for most of my life. And when I hit 40, I was like, oh, I've got to really protect my skin. And I wish I would have more before, but again, a lot of times because of, um, uh, changing the reactive oxygen and really giving our skin nutrients, we can reverse some of that damage. Um, but talk about sun real briefly, because <laughs> that's a big one, isn't it? Yeah, it is. You know, and when I talk about oxidative damage is one of the root causes, we, when we think about skin, a lot of times that's, you know, that, that sun um, exposure can accelerate that oxidative damage. But, um, you know, it, it's tricky because we, we also, we love the sun because it helps with our vitamin D levels. And we enjoy getting outdoors because of the health benefits of being in, the, in nature and being outdoors. And, you know, you and I both, we yeah. live in beautiful places that where the outdoors is a huge part of our lifestyle, right? Mm -hmm. So um, I think it's important to be smart about the sun. Don't be afraid of the sun. Uh, I want you to be able to get yeah. out and enjoy it. But using, um, you know, especially when we're looking at, you know, going into spring and summer months when the sun is stronger, we're outdoors more, we're more, have more exposed skin, thinking about trying to avoid the middle of the day when the sun is its harshest, trying to go, you know, earlier and then later in the day. And certainly when you go out in the sun, doing your best to wear, the biggest thing first is to think about hats and cover-ups and then also sunscreen. So I would say, but use shade to your advantage. Don't forget about that as well. Hats are really key, uh, but also, and certain cover-ups as well. But um, when it comes to your face, using a sunscreen that is more of, of a mineral sunscreen rather than a chemical sunscreen, I believe is a healthier way to go for your skin and your overall health. Problems with a lot of the chemical sunscreens is that they contain ingredients like oxybenzone, which oxybenzone is a known endocrine disrupting chemical, hormone disrupting chemical, which is one of the big concerns and a lot of skincare products is this class of chemicals that has been linked. I'm sure you've talked about this, been linked to a lot of hormonal imbalances and, and, and health issues that result from the exposure to that. So we wanna reduce our exposure. Plus it's not good for the environment too. And the, some of these ingredients have been banned in places like Hawaii because the impact on the, the coral reefs and things like that. So using more of the zinc oxide based sunscreens are way better way to go. And also another great thing about them is you get instant protection with zinc oxide. When you're using a chemical sunscreen, you have to wait for that chemical reaction to happen in your skin. But if, so if you really start to think about it, like what is exactly happening yeah. in my skin? <laughs> <What's> um, happening? <laughs> so, but using the, the more mineral, they create more of a barrier function. So immediately they have that protection, which is also a great thing for kids because telling kids to wait 15 yeah. minutes <laughs> it's not even happen. <laughs> oh, thanks for clarifying. I could agree more. I love sunshine. It's so important for vitamin D. So a little sunshine, we do still need this. Um, uh, but again, like I used to be hours in the sun with baby oil back in the day. <laughs> I can't even imagine. I was not planning on before we end and, and then I'll give you a chance to kind of leave us with less to this. I'm going to share a little picture with you guys of me from I think six years ago and then a year ago and how different my skin is already. This is going to kind of blow your mind. And I'm going to be real vulnerable here and just share. This is totally spur of the moment. Um, can you see that picture? 
So on the left is six years ago in the midst of mold. I mean, my skin, you can see the, the lines and the different stuff there. You can see the target, you see my eyes. I mean, there's real, and the one on the right is a year ago. I feel like I, I'm even more shiny than I was a year ago. But um, I think you can see here, like what it does to take the, the initiative, change your skincare regimen. Um, I'm gonna share links to your products, uh, Dr. Cates, because I love them. Um, and we've also developed a brand new NAD cream that I want to share because I feel like that's been a game changer on top of the other regimen that, that we're recommending. So this is just to show you, like, this is real life. This is for the moment. This is me six years ago and a year ago. And can you tell the difference there? Um, yeah. I'm, I'm almost embarrassed to show, but if it helps people understand, like it really does make a difference. That was when I started to say, I think I was probably 39 and now I'm 44. And I think I, one of the things I was like, gosh, I'm looking older than my age. And now I think I've actually reversed that <laughs> to where I look at least my age, maybe a little bit younger. Uh, and you clearly do, Dr. Kate, you look amazing. You glow, you're a perfect um, poster for your own skincare line. Um, so I wanted to be sure and share that to give you guys encouragement that I live this, Dr. Kate lives this. Um, this, this is stuff that I'm practicing every day. I'm trying to find good products. I'm trying to do what I tell my patients to do because, um, I have the same issues that you do. And I've had all kinds of skin issues that I've overcome, but it's possible. It's possible. And that's, what's exciting. Um, well, any last final words to leave us with, um, encouragement and I'll, like I said, I'll, I'll be sure and link all to your products on here and everywhere else that you can find this video. You know, I want to leave your audience with a tip and that is to, um, grab a garbage bag and go into your bathroom. Take some time to do this. When you do your spring cleaning, this is a great time to do it. Um, go and look at your personal care products. Start looking at the labels. And here's another thing is if it's been sitting there for a while and you don't know how long you've had it, just throw it away. These products do have a shelf life. They do expire. Uh, the Spot Doctor products, we have a two-year shelf life for our products, which is kind of, it's a little unique in the natural skincare world, but we have a nice uh, natural preservative system that we use. But when, especially with natural products, you want to be mindful of that. If and um, try and avoid the ones where you don't stick your fingers in the products, you're contaminating your products. Mold can grow very easily in open containers. That's why we also, most of our products come in pumps or even, you know, with one, we have a mask that has a lid that opens. We have a, use the little spatula that comes with these so that you're not contaminating, put the lids back on and then throw, get that garbage bag, throw away any products that you don't know how long they've been sitting there. They're expired. And um, also start learning about toxins and skincare and trying to start making that shift. Spring's a great time to do that. Awesome. Thank you so much for your time and your expertise. It's just been great to reconnect and hear all the good stuff that's happening. And um, hopefully we'll have a few more good ski days before the season ends. <laughs> Absolutely. Thank you for having me on, Dr. Joe. You're welcome. It. Thanks so much.